You mentioned at the beginning of the briefing around the notifications of a case of COVID in a school. Can you make it clear around what happens if there um, are a few cases in a school? Is that notified on a website? Is British Columbia considering doing something like Alberta does and tracking uh, school cases online so the public can see those cases? And then what qualifies for a school outbreak compared to just a, a case in a school? Sure. And these are the, the we have a protocol that um, if it's not up yet, it will be on the uh, the BCCDC website around this. Um, so we are looking at several different scenarios. We know that there's likely um, both adults and children right now, because we have transmission in our community, who may have the virus and may um, be, develop the symptoms and become sick when they're attending school or uh, you know at home before they go into school. That's why it's so, so important that we have our screening in place, that everybody must check themselves for symptoms before they go into school. And that includes the teachers, the administrators, everybody. And we need to make sure that we have those, uh, that we avoid those close contact situations um, in, the, in the school setting where we might transmit this to others. But I'm getting away from myself. So we know that we'll have um, cases that, that pop up. And we've seen that in other provinces where school has started as well. And these are people who are exposed either through social contacts, through family contacts in the community. If there's no transmission event in the school or there's no exposure when somebody is infectious in the school, then that is not considered an outbreak. That's not considered a school case. We will. Um, and local health officers will be working with every school so that every school family, school community is aware that there's cases, that there may be a case in their school. It may not require anybody else to stay home. If there is a possible exposure, it may be that some of the learning group may have to be uh, uh, quarantine for a period of time depending on what type of exposure happened, how many people had close contact and that will be part of the investigation that each um, health authority will do with the school. An outbreak would be when we see transmission between people in the school setting where extra additional measures have to take place and that's what we will be reporting on publicly to everybody when we have an outbreak if and when we have an outbreak in a school. And that's what we'll be uh, focusing our measures on, making sure we prevent those from happening. Richard, do you have a follow-up? And beyond that, Dr. Henry, is there a timing for when a school uh, may be closed or a cohort may be required to isolate? And in the worst-case scenario, is there something in your mind that would lead to the system having to close down like we saw in March? Yeah, I, I do not see uh, foresee a situation where the system would have to close down that would mean that we were in uh, dire straits in many other aspects of our community and that's what we're trying to absolutely avoid i do see there's a couple of scenarios where we may see schools or groups of people having to self-isolate or close so um, it'll depend on the investigation the, the scenario that I could see happening would be if there was multiple exposures or a transmission between adults in a school setting and that there wasn't sufficient uh, staff left to safely operate the school. We've seen that happen with uh, influenza outbreaks. We've seen that happen in, in, uh, um, in other parts of the world where schools have reopened, where um, the teachers are getting together and, and inadvertently, I mean, people don't do this on purpose, but where they tr um, can transmit the virus between each other and then um, others would be in an exposed situation so they would have to be home and quarantined. So if that happens, I could see uh, potentially a school having to close and those are the things that we want to avoid by making sure that we're doing the right things to prevent that type of scenario from happening. Um, in terms of in, in a school setting, if a teacher or a student um, was sick with the virus, it would be an investigation to determine exactly who they had contact with that could lead to um, the type of exposure that would lead to transmission. So that's, uh, that's what we do in public health with our contact tracing and we'll be doing that with every single case in, in each school.